I couldn't agree more. Beast Coast are better than you think. Plain and simple. And in this video, I'm going to show you why. Beast Coast are playing against Dark Zero in the semifinals of the NAL playoffs. They're down 5-1 to one after their attacking half, but the way they've been playing, it should probably be a lot closer. Even so, they find themselves down going into their defense. But their style of calculated aggression and team play is about to make the usually unstoppable Dark Zero attack seem unbelievably weak. One of the things I want to stress in this video is that there's nothing special about Beast Coast setups. They haven't reinvented the wheel, uh, deployable shields, or reinforced walls. Everything that makes them good is how they play as a team. This first round, for example, they're playing pretty much the most standard piano defense possible, with a Goyo, Mute, and Solus to slow down the attack, Warden to hold down positions in the face of attacker utility, and Frost for her shield. In this round, though, the ops barely matter. Just watch how they react to the DZ attack. DZ opt to go for a yellow stairs take, using the Monty to clear space. This is a really powerful way to force the defense back. By simply walking in, he can break the defense's crossfire on the choke. This is why BC brought the Goyo. They want to wait until Canadian tries pushing forward before popping the canister to do as much damage as possible and deny DZ's push until the flames have burned out. Little cells abound as well. Rotations to boot, but I think this one might be coming on pretty quickly. Acadia immediately hops down the yellow skylight. One player right around the corner with the shotgun. Three roamers on this top floor site, but Vulcan Pack detonated. Canadian standing in it a little too long, perhaps losing quite a lot of HP. Damage done and stall achieved. But DZ don't really need very much in order to plant on this attack. They only need Vending Hall, Closet, and CEO in order to plant right here behind the piano. And they've already done most of the work to get there. The only thing left is to force BC back from CEO. They start to push up, but that's when Beast Coast springs their trap. Most importantly, he's just making sure Canadian cannot be flanked from behind. Spirit's trying to get aggressive in this position, worried about the bathroom window, worried about the yellow stairs. Another set of bees goes out to make it more difficult to play in CEO. Likely gonna drop down the hatch momentarily based on the amount of pressure he's facing. But now he'll back off. There's now four defenders all on this top floor. Oh. C4 goes out, nukes Panbazoo inside a connector. Canadian very low HP, just one bullet away from death. Easy finisher for Spirits, easy round seven for Beast Coast, it seems, as Nath on the opposite side of the map from the clear now has to repel into a really difficult situation. They don't even care. BC read the push and baited DZ into walking connector. Then, as DZ were panicking because of the C4, both Spirits and Diffuser instantly react to fight through Secretary and press the Monty yellow. Canadian is begging for help, which prompts NJR to repel in CEO. He's immediately shut down by Gavin because even as BC press, they're still leaving players to hold any gaps. A perfectly played trap play by BC, leading to a well-deserved, flawless round. Beast Coast are playing CEO and meeting with a purely horizontal extension. They've spread out all across the top floor and plan to meet DZ's push head on, forcing them to use util in order to clear power positions and break defender crossfires. The only things notable about BC's setup is the Tachanka, which they're using to prevent any sort of fast play CEO, and the Solus below, who can threaten flanks and prevent lurks in the early round before transitioning to play plant denial if DZ manages to take sight. Otherwise, BC are going to react to where they see DZ's attack is coming from. Consulate top floor is notoriously difficult to attack, so DZ will need to stack four or even five different players in order to trade out bodies in exchange for space. Dark Zero opts to go for an admin clear. The advantage of admin over CEO is that the attack can pretty reliably get inside of admin to begin their take. The downside, though, is this player playing Soda. This shield is one of the most difficult power positions to clear in the entire game. This paired with the clash means DZ have their work cut out for them. Historically, DZ would have simply tried to use their util to clear it, but they've been starting to lean a little bit more into the aggressive meta High Level Siege has been seeing lately. They decide to try to make a play in order to swing the round in their favor. Dedicated players, though, than the last time we saw, at least when it comes to the off lineup. You got the clash. Oh, and hot and cold gets. What a blunder by the clash of hot and cold. Off the drone work from Canadian, Pamba makes a hyper-aggressive stab up Visa stairs, catching the defense completely off guard. He then immediately peels off, making sure to stay alive to secure an early advantage for DZ. Despite being a man down 20 seconds into the round, this is still super winnable for BC. Their position is weaker, sure, but they still have the Soda Shield. As long as they hold onto that, 
GZ can't make any progress. Unfortunately for them though, Dark Zero are probably the best team in the world at playing around utility. And as his team starts establishing control inside of Admin, Nafe is literally parkouring his Flores drones in to get rid of the shield soda. Valley, not a lot of Zofia. Maybe you have the Firebolts, but a lot of the times you want to save those for the Execute. So with that clash gone, a lot less utility sync from Dark Zero, a huge obstacle no longer a factor. And that doesn't even start on the fact it's a 5v4. Nice impact from Gavini. I am astounded that hasn't destroyed the deployable shield as well. Gavin is actually ridiculous. Most teams usually bring a mute to stop the Flores from getting the shield, but Gavin is too cool for all of that and decides to impact trick the Flores drones instead. This is actually super difficult to do, since if he throws them too close, his own impacts will just destroy the shield anyway. But it doesn't matter because Gavin is just like that, I guess. Anyways, after that silly little play, BC starts setting themselves up for another team fight. Gunner has managed to make his way through a gap to the top of Visa stairs. BC now have players Blue Door, Meeting Hall, Visa, and Soda. They're going to fight together all at once to retake Coffin and Break as DZ are setting up to push off their util. These sorts of plays are so hard to shut down as the defense gets ahead of attacker util, giving them a huge advantage in the fight. Uh, let's strip away when it comes to these Rotero drones. The nice little flank, but not even necessary. Diffuser runs through the fire, takes out one, finds another, and now it's Dark Zero with three kills in a row. It's Gav in behind his shield. Despite BC's coordinated aggression, DZ managed to shut them down and trade out to keep their man advantage. The dust settles with Gaveni in a 1v2. He's already been playing great this round. If he were to close it out, it'd be worthy of a highlight reel. He knows about this player right to his left. You can see he's aiming for this far angle instead, so more than likely has no idea about the gridlock here of Bolo. Drone through, and he should be dead to rights, but no, he slips through the cracks. And JR, can you get the fight instead? Gav? Clutch him against DZ, it's building, he works his way back, he kills his replacement, and he gets a JR! BC with another defensive round! What a clutch by Gaveni. He keeps DZ off of map point and brings them one round closer to tying it up. Even so, they still trail by two full rounds. On top of this, they now need to defend their offsite the weakest in their rotation. They decide to defend Archives and Tellers. The site itself isn't terrible, with a lot of space around it where the defense can contest the attackers, but it's incredibly difficult to defend right. In order to prevent the attack from planting in Tellers, defenders need to spread around it in all directions. Beast Coast are doing this by fighting for control of Admin, Archives, and Expo, giving them coverage at every potential entry point to prevent DZ from lurking in. DZ ID on prep phase drones that Diffuser is playing solo in Expo so they move quickly to take the fight. They attempt to 2v1 him, but Diffuser saw last round how fast DZ took the fight up Visa and is ready for the aggression. He shuts down Pamba and stays alive long enough for Gunner to move into position lounge. Instead of fighting in a 1v2, Nafe opts to fall off in order to keep the round from spiraling out of control. Now, the round completely changes gears. Dark Zero flips their take to start taking space admin. They want to group up and work together in order to isolate a player and bring it back to an even man count. They post up outside the windows and start droning Visa and admin. But look at this. Dark Zero have made a rookie mistake. They've somehow forgotten to shoot the default cam outside of Admin. Beast Coast quickly spot this, and Gavin, hot off his clutch from last round, goes to punish the mistake. Pounds and seven and eight on top of that. We saw just how well he was playing up against LG earlier, but a lot more gaps when it comes to that. BC looking for everything when it comes to the exterior of the building. In a hilarious turn of events, DZ starts a redroning visa as Gavin goes to make his play. Canadian and NJR manage to react just in time to punish Gavin and equalize the round. Now that the round is stabilized, they continue their clear admin. NJR and Naif drone as Bolo takes. DZ do such a good job of all coming together to ensure that they don't cut any corners. Beast Coast are forced back as DZ continue their setup. Their plan is to plant somewhere inside of Tellers by forcing BC back into the basement and piano, effectively boxing them out of Tellers. The only problem with this is that BC have a C4 and and bulletproof cams in order to deny any plant attempt. To counter this, DZ need to create some alternate pressure to threaten the site players so that they're distracted as DZ go for the plant. To this end, Nafe goes to start mapping open the wall escape tunnel, but Beast Coast are just ready for everything. Spirits is at the bottom of the stairs and listening for the torch as Houghton preps a C4 to toss through the open window. And this little road here for secret. We do have a player here from BC though, so probably not gonna get too far. 
And Nath? What has happened? Did the Nitro Cell catch him? Luckily, Nath only gets downed. He's able to quickly get picked up by Bolo before finishing opening the wall. Then, DZ act. Bolo tosses out a ram drone and they begin contesting Vert. Canadians sprints into sight to start attempting a plant, and NJR from the floor above starts spamming flashes at Teller's stairs to prevent any retake from below. But DZ never cleared projector, and Gunner, left unchecked, may just be in the perfect position to win the round. Teen, the inevitable flood from Dark Zero. Bolo starts it off in their favor. Hot and cold, the one to fall. Gunner now rotating down to try to catch it. Ram found out. Bolo not looking. Canadian on the diffuser, but still a 2v2. Gunner got to back off only 10 seconds, but it can swing in the blink of an eye if they're not careful. NJR's got to cover. Intel on one player swinging, but Spirits from below cuts him down. Nothing NJR can do, an impactless frag. Beast Coast go back to Piano and Expo. They make no changes to their lineup. They're happy with how the last round played out and they see no reason to switch it up. DZ for their part, make a few minor changes. They've switched off the Monty and are bringing tons of util to work vert. The overall plan is the same, take yellow, drop hatch and plant behind the piano, but they realize that they need to do more. BC's retakes have been devastating. So this round, Dark Zero aim to clear the entire top floor. No more minimal map takes. The round starts as always, with DZ working around the map to apply ghost pressure by opening up windows and doors. They quickly take space inside yellow and begin to push BC back. But BC aren't really a team that likes giving up space. They have a very simple methodology. If you take space somewhere, we retake space somewhere else. We've already seen this a few times, in both their trap play on the Monty in round 7 and their full press towards admin in round 8. This round is no exception. The moment DZ start fighting towards Secretary, Spirits is already hitting the flank. There's no hesitation in their play. This team is insane. Fine with the solos who can get aggressive in the face of Dark Zero, this Beast Coast defense can do quite a lot. Spirits actually going for the retake of the top floor, but a bit lacking in intel. Pamazoo finds one, but Gavini hot and cold able to pick up the next two. So advantage actually going the way of Beast Coast, though Gavini found out on the connector window, but an immediate trade. Pamazoo cut down by Diffuser, so the advantage still lacking for Dark Zero. Diffuser with one more. Oh my god, they're so good. Spirits was immediately shut down on his retake, but it doesn't matter. Beast Coast use his death as a distraction to get aggressive everywhere at once. They take fights on all of the entries, getting ahead of DZ's util and sitting their attack down before it even has the chance to get going. Beast Coast go back to CEO. The last time this site was played, Dark Zero made a hyper aggressive play to get an early kill on the clash, and they still weren't able to close out the round. This time, they'll surely receive no such gift. Beast Coast are going to make sure to keep themselves alive, making this round exponentially harder for Dark Zero. For their part, DZ decide to try a slightly different approach. Last time, they worked almost exclusively admin side. So this time, they decide to change it up. They still send two players to clear admin, but this is just bait to distract BC from the real push. While Nafe and Bolo are making noise admin, Canadian and Pambazoo start getting ready to make a play top yellow. DZ to try and get something here. Try and get their foot on the gas, get their foot on somebody's neck. It might be Spirits as he's dipping and dashing. It's going to be BC that light up the kill feed first to Pambazoo. He can't find anything. He's grasping at straws and the round's practically over before he can finally get the first kill on the board. They will rotate back over to the single. Does have some things to worry about downrange, but Gunner with a double. Off the flashes from Canadian, Pamba works up Connector towards CEO. He tries to take a fight with Spirits, but Spirits has such good awareness and runs away to hide in Secretary. In the meantime, Diffuser sets up to help his teammate. He sees the flashes being tossed in from bathroom, so he swings the window to relieve the pressure, allowing Spirits to stay alive. At the same time, Gaveni on the other side of the map decides once again to get ahead of the Dark Zero push. He swings out from Soda and kills Bolo and Break before retreating back to his shield, protected by the clash. With an overwhelming man advantage, Beast Coast once again simply group up to take the fights against the remaining attackers, securing another round in convincing fashion. For their final defensive round, BC decide to go Tellers and Archives. They're playing the same way as last time, extending all across the map with essentially no presence on the actual site. DZ, for their part, recognized the reason they lost last time was because they only actually cleared half the map, allowing for a relatively easy retake for BC. Not once to make the same mistakes twice, Dark Zero posture to full clear the map. They want to treat it like an admin overtake, with a cut on the bathroom window to prevent roamers from falling off. 
Gavin is starting over admin side, and once he recognizes the pressure, he immediately moves to fall off and prevent DZ from finding the opening pick. Beyond just this though, he recognizes that DC will likely set up a cut player to ensure he's picked off. He tells his team, guys, I'm getting pressured top here. Somebody quick, come yellow to help me fall back to sight. He's exactly right. As Gavin sprints back, he hears Nafe on the bath window. Without even taking the time to set up the play, both he and Gunner work in tandem to guarantee the kill. Seeing if they can finally get one under their belt before DC move us on to Clubhouse with a perfect defensive side. Caffini wrapping around Butterfly. immediately wow. finds Nafe. Just good night. <laughs> bye bye. Out of the round unceremoniously. This, this right here is why Beast Coast are so good. Gunner impacts the bathroom wall as Gavin goes to take the fight. They always work together to take fights and guarantee rounds. There's nothing special about their setups or their ops. It's all in their fundamentals and how they play. I love this team. Beast Coast have the opener, but the round isn't over. Dark Zero have traded a death for map control, which isn't terrible for them. On top of this, they know that it will take time for Gunner and Gavin to make their way back to site, so they decide to ramp up the pace and make a play. Bolo, playing on the loudest op of the game, throws some Ram Drones Visa as a distraction and to mask noise as Canadian drops the corner hatch to create chaos on site. All of DZ then collapse as a last ditch effort to wrestle site control away from BC. They flood below to overwhelm the site, but BC are all playing together and are ready to fight as a team. Just dash, just run, get back to site, force them to use this full timer because that's what they're going to do. They're forced to try and find something. And as soon as I start lining this up for DZ to take their time, like we usually see, it's anything but. Canadian's going to drop down the back hatch. I think he's recognized what's going on. Dark Zero will have to try and make this a murky round. And so far, not so good. It's down to Pambazoo in a one versus three. And he hasn't gotten too much done when it's came to this offensive side. A lot of this heavy lifting coming on their defenses, but you could say the same about C BC. It's just been more successful. A goo mine down. Ambazoo, they know exactly where this man is. He's going to dip and dash and somehow find his way to the pillow position. Okay, he's in his hands, though. Could be just, yeah, going to be pleasant.